Hello out there casual fanatics, Jeremy here, a uh, little bit lower voice because it is later at night and I am tired, it has been a long week, um, happy 20th anniversary of Pokemon, yay, I am a day after Pokemon day, I know I'm a little bit late on this but well, I wanted to give my alignment video a little bit of time to breathe, um, as you probably know from previous experiences, I do actually like Pokemon, though I'm not much of a competitive battler, so the fact that this franchise is 20 fucking years old, and I've already shot, um, shot away the ability for kids to be able to watch this video, is an amazing thing. You know, not a lot of things last 20 years and even fewer are consistently good over that course i don't think with the exception of some of the spin-off games that there's ever been a main series pokemon game that's absolutely been horrible and that is amazing and you know later on this year we're going to be getting new games gen 7 yo Gen 7, seventh generation. So, it being the 20th anniversary of Pokemon, and it being the day after the of Pokemon Day, um, a lot of people on the internet have been giving their thoughts about, you know, their experiences in Pokemon. So, I'm going to be no different. I'm going to do much the same thing myself. And... Bring back an old friend. How you doing, girl? Uh, I started with Generation 1. And much of the reason why Eevee is my favorite Pokemon is because of having started there. I had a Game Boy Pocket uh, right around the time that the Game Boy Color came out. And I got the Pokemon Red version. But my experiences with Pokemon actually go a little bit earlier than that. Uh, at Kmart at the time, in the electronics section, they actually had demo units for the video games. Where they had like a Super Nintendo and a Game Boy side by side, hooked up to TVs, where you could play games for a limited amount of time before it automatically power cycled. And... I would spend a lot of my time in the store there while my parents were shopping. So I would go there, I would have the Game Boy down, I'd be looking up at the screen. My neck would be at an awkward angle, which is probably the reason why I still have neck issues to this day. But I had fun spending just like five minutes at a time seeing as far as I could get in Pokemon Blue with whatever Pokemon I decided to get see what Pokemon I could catch, how far I could go, how many battles I could fight before that thing rebooted. So much fun. And I, yeah, I remember it fondly, and I'm constantly sad that stores don't really have all that many demo places for video games anymore. Some of them still do. Best Buy still do. Um, but not a lot of places do anymore. And you know, it's kind of sad to see that go away. So, again, around the time that the Game Boy Color came out, I had my parents get me a Game Boy Pocket. And the first two games that I got for that were Pokemon Red and the Pokemon Trading Card Game. And I played, and while I did play a fair amount of the Pokemon trading card game, Game Boy game, I played the hell out of Pokemon Red. Both me and my sister did, actually. We got an AC adapter so we could plug in and play for hours at a time. And just, like, lay there on the floor in the most awkward positions possible. At least that's what I did. And run through and play Pokemon through to the end, catching whatever Pokemon we see raising them to new heights of power, meeting this adorable little girl for the first time, and eventually gathering all the gym badges, going to the Indigo League, and becoming 
the champion. I remember it all. I usually play it as Bulbasaur. I think I did try as uh, Squirtle and such uh, every now and again, but I mostly played Bulbasaur. Running through it all, you know, trying desperately to not get freaked out from the lavender town, you know, early days of the internet, the creepy pastas that came out of that. And then finding out about the glitch. The glitch that would give you virtually infinite of any item, be it Pokeballs, rare candies, which is what I did more often than not, PP ups, you know, stat enhancing enhancers, money gold nuggets, which I would use to sell for insane amounts of money. So I could buy up crazy amounts of potions. I was just playing around with it. I didn't even, you know, it was a total game breaker, but I didn't care because it was fun. And as fun as the game was by itself, this insanity just went above and beyond. And of course, it goes into Mewtwo, or into Missing No as well, the iconic glitch Pokemon the centerpiece of that glitch. You know, I, I never did buy in much to the whole thing around Mew and the truck glitch and everything, but Missing No is the shit, man. Missing No is baller. And I think I even caught a few, and it's amazing that my save file is not corrupted as a result from any of these, because, you know, I would get them level them up, play them, get them to level up, and then they turn into, like, a level 100 hyper badass Kangaskhans or something like that. It was, oh, it was, oh, awesome. Just, um, I never did get to play the Gen 2 games, at least not until much, much later, but I did hear much about the Gen 2 games, and that, of course, is where, well, Give me a second. That's where I found out about Umbreon and Espeon and became such great fans of them as characters. By the way, still, thank you Labby for these ears. <laughs> for this. Uh, I'm a shiny <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, and those two have remained my favorite evolutions to this day. They're, they're, were like, they took my favorite Pokemon from Generation 1 and made them even better. I, I love them. I did eventually get to play the Gen 2 games uh, when I was in college through less than legal means. But uh, uh, Gen 3, I never really did get to play. I, I did get to play several of the spin-off games. In fact, my sister and I had a lot of fun playing each other on Pokemon Stadium on our N64 as well. Uh, but the Gen 3 games, I never really did get to play a lot of. Of course, I, I did hear a lot about them. And again, to this day, my one of my favorite legendaries or forms of a legendary is Shadow Lugia. And I'm excited for Pokemon Tournament because they're bringing back Shadow Form for Pokemon with Shadow Mewtwo. And Shadow Mewtwo looks baller as hell. Oh my god. That is probably not a phrase a white boy wearing a shiny Umbreon hat should ever say. <clears throat> but I never did get to play the Gen 3 games, mostly because, again, I didn't have a Game Boy Advance at that time. I personally couldn't afford one, and my parents couldn't afford to get me one either. But, and emulation back then was still kind of nascent and 
and not really working that well, especially on the Game Boy Advance. There were many, many games, particularly the Pokemon games, that did not and still do not work very well in emulation. So, I didn't really get to play Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, at least not during that period of time. But then Gen 4 came around, and my girlfriend at the time bought me a DS and Pokemon Pearl. One of the best birthday presents I've ever gotten. Well, the side from the year that she actually came down, but anyway. Yeah, she actually got that for me. And I, <laughs> I I spent much of the weekend actually playing that and and playing on the two on the DS with Picture Chat with her. It, it was such a fun time. And and yeah, that generation was a little bit slower, but still it was fun. Unfortunately at some point I when I was going on a trip I lost that three DS or I lost that DS, but I eventually got another one. And I got Platinum for it. And Platinum I found actually much more fun than Pearl. And then the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes came out. Absolutely fantastic games, I think. I, I had so much fun with those. You know, getting to see your Pokemon walk around behind you, you know, having a Gen 4 <laughs> Pokemon like, like Lucario just like, mm, 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 mm. or, you know, having like a, well, having like, like an Eevee, you know, or an Eeveelution go, <laughs> walking around behind you, it's just so adorable. And I actually did like the Pokewalker. It, it actually came around at a time when I was kind of walking around a little bit more. Uh, walking just for the sake of it. And having the Pokewalker kind of gave me additional motivation to do that. Because, you know, I would have that Pokemon on my side actually gaining power <laughs> and walking with me in real life kind of really kind of the first steps that pokemon took into a form of augmented reality but um so and that was actually the first game that i ever pre-ordered was pokemon was pokemon uh, soul silver to be precise because i wanted the lugia figurine I have since lost the Lugia food figurine. Ugh. Anyway. Then, and then came Pokemon Black and White. I forget which one I pre-ordered. I think it was Black. And the main game of that was pretty fun. And I liked the storyline and where they went with it. With it really being kind of a more intelligent storyline. That post-game, though, that post-game was disheartening because, I mean, toward the end of the game, yeah, you kind of had a big difficulty jump with first the battle to end, with versus N, and then versus Getsis. And then you get into the post-game and it's like... <laughs> and keep in mind, Throughout all of my Pokemon journey, I have never been a serious competitive battle. The only EVs I cared about were this kind. So I, I wasn't optimizing my team or anything or worrying about grinding. I just, I just wanted to play the games for their stories and to play with my favorite Pokemon. So that post game was just, yeah, so... Black 2 and White 2, I skipped. And honestly, I thought I was never going to play another Pokemon game. And then came the news. There were 
three things in particular that got me to purchase Pokemon X. The one, first thing, new evolution. Second thing, Pokemon Ami, which was basically kind of Pokemon Nintendogs. And if this is not still in Generation 7, I will be sorely disappointed. And the third thing, Mega Evolution. You know, I grew up in the Digimon days. I knew it looked very Digimon-esque, but you know what? I didn't care. Why? Because my Charizard could turn into Red Eyes fucking Black Dragon. Because my Lucario could turn into a dreadlocked super badass. And, most importantly, from my playthrough of X, because this very unassuming andro androgynous Gardevoir that I had by the name of Jasmine became a fucking juggernaut. And that was the first Pokemon that I ever actually super trained. Mostly because the super training feature made it a hell of a lot more easier than, you know, the EV training of or of your. Or of or, yeah. Of or a or of your. But, uh, yeah, then between those three things, I was like, damn it, damn it, TPCI, damn it, Game Freak, you know how to get me. You know how to get me. And got me they did because I, working at Kmart at that time, made sure that I purchased Pokemon X and Y. And being in the electronics department, I promoted that like hell. There are probably more people in western Oklahoma who bought Pokemon X and Y because I was shilling it than would have otherwise. A little egocentric, I know, but it, it's probably true. And that was fantastic. And actually, this was really... I, I did a little bit of this with Heart Gold and Soul Silver and a little bit of this with Black and White with my little brother David. But this was really the moment where I really got into the more social aspects of it, where I got into the trading and such. And this is really where I did more than just play the game itself. And to this day, I maintain that the story of it, the group of rivals there, were Game Freak's way of saying that we realize that there are so many different ways that play our games. There's so many different ways to play our games and so many different people who play our games in so many different ways. And we want to let you know, not a single one of you is wrong. You have fun with our games the way that you have it. And that is something that ever since I've started talking about Pokemon more with people online that I have used as my guiding principle. Because I honestly believe that the people at Game Freak, that Tajiri, that Masuda, that Sugimori, I believe that they all think that way. And I believe that's why they build their games the way that they do with so many different features that appeal to so many different people. So, again, when it came around time for to get, when it came around time for the Gen 3 remakes for Ruby and Sapphire, I was planning on getting them. Slight problem. This was around the time that my Kmart store decided to do this to the video game section. And not just my Kmart store, but every Kmart store in the U.S. that is still living. Did this to the electronics section. Video games? No. No video games. Consoles? Not getting any more in. Why? Well, their reasoning was because of digital distribution but even then even if you do include for that one people still prefer to have hard copies two 
there are still people who like to readily get their games offline. And three, not everybody has good internet access, certainly not in western Oklahoma, where a lot of the people live out in the boons. So, and even then, you would still need to sell consoles for the stuff to play on, but... Yeah. But I did get my copy of Alpha Sapphire. I went by it digitally, because where I was living, at my parents' house, we did have good internet, and I could download it. I'm still sore, though, to this day, about the fact that Kmart did that. But I got my copy, and I had a hell of a fun time playing through the entire story, experiencing the new Mega Evolutions, going up against Primal Kyogre, and of course, that Delta episode, y'all. That Delta episode. And that was also the first time that I actually did a little bit of competitive battling. I competed in the second World Cup, by the way, Albatross champion, last in the world, woo! Yes, I still take a strange amount of pride in the fact that I won zero matches. <laughs> you know, you want to come for the Albatross champion? You're welcome. The, on the only stipulation is that whoever wins loses the belt. <laughs> you want to be Albatross champion? You gotta lose to me to get it, son. <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to Sun and Moon. Um, I haven't decided what version I'm going to get of those two. A lot of people seem, that I know seem to be going Sun, so I may decide to go Moon. If for no other reason, then I do also have an affinity for the Sailor Moon franchise. But, um, you know, it's, for me though, it's not really just about the games. It's about, it's about the people that I've met and friends that I've made and I, that you, of course you know Labby Dragon who is a fair amount of a Pokemon fan herself um, I believe she's working for a uh, for less group now every now and again where she actually did a Misty themed uh, themed act and um, she is one of the no Robert go to bed good night good night go good night good night I don't know why he does that all the time anyway did a misty theme burlesque act and you saw this Eevee pen in one of my uh, Pokemon fan theories uh, surrounding a blanket that pinning a blanket into place that for a uh, chibi when she was sick well that is actually one of the set that labby made for me that i commissioned from labby i have all the evolutions uh she made all the evolutions for me uh she made uh yeah so i've got vaporeon Glaceon, Sylveon, this actually when I uh, ordered this uh, she had not yet made one of these but this was a special request from me and she so happily made that at no additional cost although I would, would have been willing to pay extra. Of course Espeon and Umbreon, my two faves, and then of course Jolteon and Flareon. And again, I have pins for all of those. Oh, and uh, I almost missed one because I had set this aside because I'm going to wear this this year for uh, St. Patrick's Day as my green Leafeon. And, uh, yeah, she may, she, uh, has her own Etsy store. And 
where she makes various different things, she actually cross stitched all of those. And again, they, they are fantastic and I love them so much. Um, I've also done some Pokemon role play, and there's actually a Pokemon role playing tabletop game. Um, I haven't gotten to play it, but as those of you who have stuck around from the podcast day know, um, Lady Jess, <laughs> probably know, Lady Jess certainly did. Oh, wait, no, that was part of the episode that didn't make it to air. So, anyway, um, but I did do some Pokemon roleplay, and I did make some nice friends out of that as well. Uh, some of them I've not been able to be in contact with for quite some time, and I, I do miss them. Um, it was actually through that that I finally came to terms with the fact that I am, in fact, bisexual because of the... Um, because of one role player who was playing uh, Will from from the Johto Elite Four, playing him as the very very stereotypical gay guy, but a very endearing one. And then there was another one who actually um, role played Fantina as a uh, transvestite male, which probably is the reason why I always see Fantina to this day as a tra transgender male, and to uh, much affection, really. And I've... So, yeah, between that, I that actually helped me come to terms with my bisexuality, which is kind of weird, if you think about it, that a largely kid-oriented franchise helped me realize something about me as an, myself as an adult. And yet in a way it's also not weird. In a way kind of makes sense. Because every Pokemon journey you go on, every protagonist that you play is going on a journey of self-discovery. They're going you know, into a new world to meet up with adorable and sometimes scary creatures that have immense powers and along the way not only do they learn more about these creatures they learn more about themselves at least unless their name is Ash Ketchum but uh, you know the most innocuous of things can really turn someone's life around and make them go in a direction that they never thought that they would. And I think that's really the most enduring part of Pokemon's legacy. That 20 years later, it is still such a force that can touch people's lives for good. So, here's to 20 years of Pokemon. Here's to another 20. Here's to the upcoming Sun and Moon. And... Here's to playing however way you want, whatever way you want. Don't want to play Smogon? Don't play Smogon. Don't want to play VGC? Don't want to play VGC. Don't want to play competitively at all? I'm with you. Play how you want to play and enjoy the ride. Until next time, keep it casual, y'all. <laughs>